But that's the problem. They allowed these witches to put a spell. While all while they were out in front of the White House, they would sit out in the White House for weeks and weeks putting spells on America. Casting spells, witch, using witchcraft on America, and now this witchcraft has gotten into folks. Folks can't even argue. They can't even tell you why. Why? They can't even, they can't explain their position. They just are in a position. So I'm gonna show you this. Let's get these lights. Show y'all a little of this. Some of it is ble it's bleeping over the cuss word, so I ain't gonna cuss you out this morning, amen. This ain't a Baptist church. So we're not gonna, I'm not gonna play the cuss words. <laughs> It's bleeped out, but some of it is pretty, pretty vicious, but it ain't no different than what you normally see. Amen. You can handle it. All right. Amen. Amen. So, but this is, I'm just going to show you who, you know, where this, what this witchcraft has done, how it has blinded the minds of our people. Well, let me talk a little, well, before I start it, let me, let me say this about the Breonna Taylor thing. This is ridiculous. So they're tearing up an entire city because the police came in and raided a drug stash house. That's Breonna Taylor's house. It's a drug stash house. It's where they stash and hide the drugs. Keep them there. They take them from the trap house, hide them in the stash house, and then the guys come and get them and distribute them. Breonna Taylor's boyfriend was one of those drug dealers. Her ex-boyfriend is in prison. She was making phone calls to him that they've transcribed. He called her, not, not uh, many days before she actually was killed. He called her and told her, I need my money from so-and-so at the, at the trap house. So they talking the whole drug deal over the phone. They transcribed it. This is an ex-boyfriend. But a current dude was one of the drugs. So they was following these cars, getting the license plates, her car, his car, going to the trap house, picking up the drugs, putting them in the stash house, selling the drugs. So the cops went, after all of this surveillance, the cops went and got a warrant. They didn't just get a regular warrant, they got a no-knock warrant. That means they can just come in and handle business because there are drugs involved. Okay. But the cops ignored the no-knock and knocked anyway. They didn't have to, but they chose to. They knocked. And of course, boyfriend wakes up and grabs his gun. No, you can't come in here. Why? Because it's a stash house. So when they don't respond, they use their no-knock warrant, bust in the door, and the dude, her boyfriend, shoots the cop. That's right. That's right. Shot him in the thigh. So the cops, <laughs> however many I got in this clip, I'm supposed to, every one of them, if you shoot, because you're in the dark, I don't know what else is in here. I don't know who's hiding behind what. We lose, we unload everything. So the drug dealer shot, the drug dealer's girlfriend unfortunately gets killed. That's Brianna. But man, my mama taught me a long time ago, if you riding in the car with drugs, you riding with the devil. So what are they marching about? What is the, what? You tearing up a city? You shooting cops? Because ABC News did this. ABC News lied to the whole world. Lied. I mean, bold-faced it, lied. Just lied. They said at the very beginning of all this that the cops went into the wrong apartment and accidentally shot Brianna. Y'all remember them saying that? That's how all of this started. And you know Negroes don't want to forget that part. They don't even want to know the truth after that. 
You went in and shot an innocent woman while she was sleeping in bed? And the drug dealer, hey, people just breaking in. I didn't know what was going on. Brother, I heard the audio. They knocked on the door and told you everything that was going on. But ABC said it was the wrong apartment. Some of y'all in here right now, this is the first time you've heard this. You really thought, some of you, that it was the wrong apartment and she was innocently killed. That's the narrative that the media put out to cause all of this because he knew, they knew that the emotional state mixed with the witchcraft that are in people's heart. See, when you're emotional and you're offended, you're open for witchcraft. I mean, what would make Judas betray Jesus? He was offended because he asked Jesus a question about the money and Jesus brushed him off. Oh, no, no, we're not doing that with the money. He was offended. He was offended. And the Bible said the devil, when it was time, the devil just got in his heart because he was offended. And that's what's happening to America. People are offended. The devil can just get in their heart. And I mean literally change them overnight. You don't even recognize them no more. Who am I talking to? Man, what happened to you? That's what I always ask. What happened to you? Like you was with the truth. What happened? Let's watch it. Let's watch. All right. It's about five minutes long, so but you need to see it. Brianna Taylor's life yeah, mattered. Say her name. Yeah. Say her name. Yeah. From the nation's capital to New York and to Brianna Taylor's hometown of Louisville, thousands of Americans have gathered to express their outrage. That a Kentucky grand jury decided that no police officer would be charged with the 26 year old's death. One officer was charged with wanton endangerment for recklessly firing rounds into a neighbor's apartment. In the aftermath of charges being dropped, two police officers were shot. A suspect is in custody, and the officers are expected to make a recovery. But the many protests in American cities were largely peaceful with Americans of all races and creeds coming out to support the Black Lives Matter movement, for which Taylor's name has become a rallying cry. I want black people to feel safe anywhere that they go. We shouldn't have to worry about, is this, are we safe? Will it be, a, will we, who will be next? It's heartbreaking because we can't keep getting murdered on the street. I'm mixed and I have a lot of black friends. I have any color friends. So if this can keep happening and they don't stand for it, when will it ever stop? I'm here because I think it's, you know, it's not right to have you know, killed her and have no repercussions for killing an innocent woman. Breonna Taylor was an emergency room technician. She was asleep when officers raided her apartment last March. Her boyfriend says he thought there was an intruder and fired his gun. Police responded with a barrage of gunfire. Taylor's death, police violence against African Americans, and a justice system that many feel turns a blind eye to countless abuses of force have created a call for change, one that continues to be echoed across the United States. Evidence shows that officers both knocked and announced their presence at the apartment. The officer's statements about their announcement are corroborated by an independent witness who was near in a proximity to apartment four. In other words, the warrant was not served as a no-knock warrant. When officers were unable to get anyone to answer or open the door to apartment four, the decision was made to breach the door. After breaching the door, Sergeant Mattingly was the first and only officer to enter the residence. Sergeant Mattingly identified two individuals standing beside one another at the end of the hall, a male and a female. In his statement, he says that the male was holding a gun, arms extended in a shooting stance. Sergeant Mattingly saw the man's gun fire, heard a boom, and immediately knew he was shot as a result of feeling heat in his upper thigh. Kenneth Walker fired the shot that hit Sergeant Mattingly. 
I just let off one shot. Like, I still can't see who it is or anything. So now the door's, like, flying open. Then all of a sudden, there's a whole lot of shots. And there's no evidence to support that Sergeant Mattingly was hit by friendly fire from other officers. Mr. Walker admitted that he fired one shot and was the first to shoot. In addition to all the testimony, the ballistics report shows that the round that struck Sergeant Mattingly was fired from a nine millimeter handgun. The LMPD officers fired 40 caliber handguns. Sergeant Mattingly returned fire down the hallway. Mattingly fired six shots. Almost simultaneously, Detective Cosgrove, also in the doorway, shot 16 times. This all took place in a matter of seconds. In total, six bullets struck Ms. Taylor. Medical evidence obtained by our team indicates that only one shot was fatal. Further medical evidence shows that Ms. Taylor would have died from the fatal shot within a few seconds to two minutes after being struck. Detective Hankinson fired his weapon 10 times, including from a outside sliding glass door and through a bedroom window. Some bullets traveled through apartment four and into apartment three before some exited that apartment. At the time, three residents of apartment three were at home, including a male, a pregnant female, and a child. There is no conclusive evidence that any bullets fired from Detective Hankinson's weapon struck Ms. Taylor. Well, that's where we are. That's where we are. They hate Jesus. So get ready to be hated if Jesus is in you. They hate Jesus. What Jesus had to do with any of this, but to them, Jesus has everything to do with it because it's witchcraft inside of them. It's witchcraft. You heard them just manipulate the facts in the Breonna Taylor case and the news report, she was asleep when the officer said there was two people standing. She was not asleep. And with her being an officer or uh, what is it? EMT, with her being that, she knows that protocol. If somebody's knocking on the door, demanding to come in, she got up. She was not in bed, sleep. But what they tell us, they want us to believe. And all of these people are marching, hating Jesus, chanting against Jesus, all of these different things because the media is telling them to. But it's not just the media, it's the offense that's in it, in them. Look at somebody and say the offended ones. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash offended dot P D F. Hey Amen. I was talking to somebody. They were actually they were here a couple of weeks ago visiting and dude told me that his wife's aunts got upset with her and began to go back and forth trying to antagonize her to make her upset, to make her come out of herself and argue back with them. They're witches. And so they knew if they could get her out of herself to argue or use bad language, whatever it is against them, they could put this spell on her that they wanted to put on her. They ended up doing that and put a spell on her. Then she began to speak the words of Lilith. And he 
hit me up and was like, I need to know what to do. My wife right now is possessed by a feminist demon and it manifested in witchcraft. This is the witchcraft that they've spread all over America. Not that they're going to spread. This is what BLM has done. It spread ancestral witchcraft. Every time they say, say, my, say her name, say her name, it's an incantation. Ancestral incantation to bring forth the spirit of that person. And you're caught, it's necromancy. And they know preachers are out, are unaware, churches are unaware because, well, not y'all. Y'all been hearing this stuff for years. But folks that haven't heard it and preachers haven't preached it, these folks are under the spell. Have you talked to them? They think something is wrong with you. You still go to church? You still sitting in a church? Something's wrong with you. No mask? Something's wrong with you. You're not social distancing? Something's wrong with you. You under a pastor? Like you trust a man? Why you got to listen to a man? The offended ones. An offended person becomes the enemy of God because their own need for justice trumps their mercy. So someone can get so caught up into what happened to them and where they come from and what they didn't have and what somebody didn't do and what they wanted, wanted somebody to do. They can get so caught up in seeking justice against that person that it begins to diminish their mercy. And this is when they become an enemy of God. They would rather punish the person that offended them than turn it over to God and let him avenge them. Romans 12 and 19. You know, well, let me finish. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is who? Mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. So the Lord is the one we're supposed to give all of this hurt too, whether it's racial, slavery, whatever you want to bring up, we're supposed to give that to the Lord and let him repay it because he's the only just judge. He's just, right? So he's not going to take out your anger on someone else because he's just. He knows when you're just being emotional and you're going to get over it. Yeah, he knew Cain was just... Emotional. So he told Cain, Cain, sin is waiting, crouching at the door. If you don't chill out, it's going to pounce on you. So he's a just God. Amen? But this is because deep within, now people don't want to give it to God because deep within, they know that the person that offended them did nothing any worse than what they have done before. <laughs> that, see that's why you don't want to give it to God because when you give it to God you got to deal with your stuff too can I get an amen on that you can't go pointing the finger at no like the old folks say four, three fingers pointed back at you and all your stuff that you've done and hid and repented for but you hid it or whatever you ain't talking you got to remember, hey, you've done some stuff. That's why nobody want to take it to God. If you take it to God, he's going to give it right back to you. And say, you're not going to let that go, but you want me to let what you did go? Well, what I did wasn't as bad. Who says? You're not the judge. And you're not just. <laughs> Amen. I know I'm pre. They don't want to give it to God because God is going to be fair. They don't, want, they, don't want, they don't want fair. Oh, fair gives everybody a fair chance. When you're mad, you don't want them to have a fair chance. End them, Lord. End them. I'm sure at once upon a time somebody was praying that you be ended. There's been times when you prayed to be ended. <laughs> Remember when the consequences were so bad, Lord, just kill me now. Kill me in my sleep. 
so I don't have to wake up and face that judge in the morning. He might throw the book at me. Just kill me, Lord. Yeah. So this is because deep within, they usually know that the person that offended them did nothing any worse than what they have done before. So if they turn it over to God, he will grant them mercy. Remember that? That was Jonah. That's how Jonah got eaten by the great fish. Because Jonah didn't want to go talk to the people in Nineveh. He's like, God, you just going to forgive them and have mercy. They deserve to die. And God said, no, you deserve to die. Mercy is not enough because they want someone to pay for all they have been through. Okay, now this is deep. This is a loaded little sentence right here. Mercy is not enough. So the people hate Jesus, hate God. They're tired of God forgiving people, tired of God having mercy on people, tired of God being a loving, forgiving God. and all. They're tired of that. They want to see somebody drop dead. But it has nothing to do with what people have done to them. How are you mad at your ancestors? How are you mad at, your, at the forefathers of this country? How are you mad at Benjamin Franklin? You ready to blow Mount Rushmore up. I'm just mad at them because they, you can't be mad at them. You sure spending that money they pitch his on. <laughs> Give me a couple of them bins, Jack. <laughs> I put tape over his face. Yeah, you spending the money. You just, I mean, you're not mad at them. You can't be. No, and then you can't be mad, this mad at somebody. You ready for somebody to drop dead? You're not that mad at that person. You're mad at yourself. You're mad at your decisions and your choices that led to the way your life is right now. Yes, I promise that's what it is. I promise you. When I was talking to the brothers, I was telling them, I was like, man, these folks ain't mad at me. They don't even know me like that. And then I ain't done nothing to them. I just preached the gospel. They're not mad at me. They came here mad. And they felt like if I said something or did something, it will help them out of that situation. Then when they saw that it's not going to help you because you keep doing dumb stuff, now they mad or try to direct their anger towards someone. But their anger is internal against themselves. They hate their decisions. They wish they hadn't married that witch. But everybody told you. A blimp showed it. No. Remember that blimp that just said no? When you was ring, ring shopping? <laughs> yeah, you just, I mean, that's your white boy. I ain't got nothing to do with that. They wish they hadn't. They wish they hadn't did this. Wish they hadn't done that. And so they're just upset. And they want someone to pay. Anyone. So witchcraft comes and creates Black Lives Matter. Oh, yeah, this is it. This is what I will funnel my hate and my anger to. So I can finally make someone pay. The cops that shot this woman, uh, we want them to pay. Yeah, you mad at something else. But mercy is not enough. We tired of going to God. We tired of going to Jesus. All he going to do is forgive them. Well, didn't he forgive you? Most of us in here, somebody was praying that we died. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us, you were so trifling, somebody was wishing that the bus would jump the curb and bam, just take you. Yeah. Back in your trifling days, you saved now. Amen. <laughs> yeah. But they want somebody to pay for what they have been through. I've been through things. Some of it wasn't even my fault. And they want somebody to pay. That's this offended generation. James 2 and 13. For he shall have judgment without what? Mercy that hath showed no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. So the person that won't show mercy, you're going to have judgment without mercy. Got this picture of these BLM attacking a Catholic priest. 
in St. Louis with brass knuckles because he's a priest, calls the name of Jesus, and they hate Jesus. It's all Jesus' fault. The devil recruits this offended army from within God's own people. You sit in here, you're listening to the messages, and you're hearing it, and at one point it was truth to you. You believed it. You, you, you enjoyed it. And then, you know, yeah, just in small increments, this little black thing just started rising up in you, and you sent me the email, Pastor, I mean, are we going to talk about the injustices that's going on here? Your injustices? Because you have some. Is that what you want to talk about? Your injustice? No, I'm talking about the global, the, 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 the black people. You black? You ain't had no black injustices? You've never treated anybody unfairly? You never lied, cheated, stole? Have you done anything? If we're going to talk about injustice, are we going to start with yours? Yeah. Hey, you know, you right, you right, you right. I know I'm right. I, you know that bothers me. I hate when people, you right, you right, and they sit in here, and their beard gets longer and longer. <laughs> sit. That offense is in them because they, they need somewhere to funnel their anger and their hatred because they're not delivered. So I can preach till my head turns blue, but it won't take root in any of it. Because they, that hatred is there in their heart. And they'll sit in here and sit in there, and all of a sudden, they'll just wake up one day and be mad like I walked up and slapped them. I'm like, brother, why are you this mad at me? But that, that, that witchcraft, that spell. That's why I keep telling y'all, don't waste your time in here. If you start feeling that, just go. Go outside, take, get some air, and then just keep getting that air. On down the street. <laughs> Amen. Somebody trying to pack this building out. I promise you that. But yeah, and just upset and just get angry. And then the devil comes to recruit. He don't want folks from out, out there. He want folks that knew God. Like him. <laughs> he wants somebody that knew and experienced God came in here, lifted their hands, and worshiped the true and living God. That's the one he wants to recruit. Because they're like him. I used to be with it. So he recruits this offended army from within God's own people. Even with Jesus, the devil had a recruit. So you think we're not going to have recruits in here? Jesus had. The devil had a recruit. With Jesus, Judas, my goodness, had the best teacher in the history of the world, the best spiritual counsel in the history of the world. This is why you can't understand. You'd be like, man, why would anybody? You can't understand. Judas was with the best teacher, the best spiritual counsel, and the best example of living that anyone could ever have, and yet none of it mattered because of his offense. Sitting there with something in his heart. You're sitting with the son of God. He's proven that he's Jesus to you. And that's not enough to change your mind. Because you have an offense. He was offended because Jesus did not give him the respect he felt he deserved. He felt disrespected. John 6 and 70. Jesus answered them. And he's talking to all of them. Have not I chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil? Judas like, hmm? I ain't even done it yet. Jesus just called him out. <laughs> Jesus wasn't no punk. Oh, yeah, I, I 
chosen you 12, and one of you is a devil. Yeah, so he felt disrespected. But you walking around being devilish. That's what gets me. Like, if you don't want to be called the devil, why are you being devilish? And why are you mad? Because somebody recognized it. So he conspired against the, how do you conspire against God's son in the earth that God created? Let's think about this. You're in earth that God created and you're going to conspire against his son? He created you and you're going to, his son is God. You're going to conspire against God and God created you. That don't make no sense, but that's what the devil did. You're just doing what the devil did. That makes no sense. You know, when we was growing up, there's no way in the world we would conspire against a pastor. I don't care what he did. We're not going to gang up and talk against a pastor. While we eating dinner over the food and the living room, my mama, we weren't about to sit up here and talk about God's chosen we felt like that was going to come back on us. I used to hear the preachers talking, and they be talking about each other, but I just let them do that. <laughs> Y'all do that over there. These folks hate Jesus. The truth. Well, so he conspired against the Son of God. The truth of the Son didn't matter. The everlasting life from the Son no longer mattered. All that he learned and all that he was taught no longer mattered. Boy, Judas was in a bad place. His offense made him side with the enemy against the Son of God. His emotions overtook him and allowed the devil to fully use him. But this is the crazy part. Then when the devil was done, because you know the devil's going to finish using you. He's only going to use you for a period, and then he's done. That's the fun part for him, because he'll use you, and you'll feel like somebody. And then he'll drop you, and now you have to face all that you did with him. And he's nowhere to be found. He's working on the next person. Matthew 27 and 3 is right here. Then Judas, which betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned. Who condemned him? Who condemned him? Him, his own. <laughs> he did it. Judas, you did it. You had the same opportunity that all the others had. You did this. But then he saw that he did it. <laughs> Because the devil was done with him. So then he repented himself. And then he brought the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and elder saying, I've sinned and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? We're done with you. We used you for exactly what we needed you to do. They done arrested Jesus. Bro, go kill yourself. I mean, he came and brought the money back and threw it at him, the Bible said. He cast it down and then went and killed himself. They took the money and was like, oh, we, can, we don't want this money. It's blood money. They threw the money in the field. They didn't even want the money back. I know I'm preaching. <laughs> Today... Many are siding with the enemy because of their offense. They are part of the end time offended army. They church hopped until they hopped out indefinitely. That's what they did. Went from church to church to find somebody to agree with them and be mad with them and hate with them. Remember about two, three years ago, the, be uh, the uh, black Hebrew Israelites were going in churches and standing up and we are the chosen ones of the blood, you know. And they know which ones to go to. Where it's one man and 
40 women, and that man is 80. <laughs> you real tough in there with the 80 year olds. <laughs> you a geriatric bully. <laughs> you real tough <laughs> when folks can't get after you. Mm-hmm. What in there? Well, they standing up. We the chosen ones. We the ones. Ah, oh, church hop. With church to church, looking for somebody that will agree with them. Oh, they come to me, brother. You loud and you be going off and man, you be just going off and you be doing. Say so, yeah, but but I'm strategic. I'm fighting the devil. I'm not fighting your mother-in-law. I'm gonna tell you to go apologize to her. I'm not fighting your daddy. I'm going to tell you to go repent to him and love him. The Bible said, honor thy father and mother so your days will be long upon the earth. Don't be bringing no hate around me, brother. I don't hate folks. I'm preaching the gospel. Now, I may be loud, but I ain't crazy. <laughs> Amen. I'm teaching repentance unto salvation. Brother, you need to repent. For that hatred in your heart. Oh, I thought you was going to come. To Brother, ain't nobody told you to go shoot the finger at your family before you came here. Now you don't have nowhere to go. I'm telling you to go repent. Get this stuff right. You're not going to go to heaven hating somebody. I don't care what they did to you. You won't go to heaven. The Bible said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall what? Obtain mercy. But they church hopped and church hopped in this church, that church, everywhere, a church church. So they finally just hopped out of church. I don't like church no more. We don't go to church no more. Church is in our heart. Church is inside of us. Church is in this car. Church is here at Starbucks. We just gather together because the church is here. And then why you calling the church members trying to do stuff with them? You better have church in your heart. I thought that was the, the, the point. Yeah, just hop that right out. They look for error in every leader to justify their lack of submission to leadership. Instead of submitting, adhering, and being led by a leader, they found issue with them and disqualified all that tried to lead them. This prepared them for the president. Now they're in the street. No leader can lead them. Cops can't lead them. Judges can't lead them. The president can't lead them. They're unleadable. Because they find error in everyone. But they find error in everyone because they were hurt and offended by someone that they have not let go of. They see the face of the person that offended them on every leader and every authority. They forget all that they have learned, how they have grown, and the opportunities they had to be better. Because their offense is now a what? It's a bitter root now. You forgetting all the opportunities you had in this country? The job, the clothes you're wearing, the money, it's going to just spit on the flag? And America's been good to you? White dude in the, in the BLM, I mean, in the video I just showed. Well, they, they, it's just not fair that people are afraid to go out and just get, boy, that was a drug shootout. <laughs> and why are you talking? <laughs> you went everywhere safely all your life. Let me get on somewhere else. But now they have a bitter root, and that bitter root is the takedown root. Now I got to take somebody down because I'm very upset. Why are you so upset? Because my life is crap. I'm mad because I hate my life. Whose fault is that? That's Judas. He hated his life after he ruined it.
Mark 4 and 17. And have no root in themselves, and so endure, but for a time. So these people have no root, so they'll endure for a time. But afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately what happens? They are offended. No root. Can I keep going? The devil knew that if he could birth a generation of people that harbored hatred for their fathers, that they could not be led by God's spirit and would be easily manipulated by the what? Their father is Instagram and Facebook. That's their father. Because they can go on there and get agreed with. Now, if we were to pull the mental profile of the folks agreeing, we would see that crazy likes crazy. It just looks like views and likes online. You know, they don't, they don't discriminate. But them 10 likes are 10 people that's out of their mind. <laughs> Have you met them? But they just need somebody to agree. Because they have issues. The devil knew that if he could birth this nation, this generation of fatherless people who've been hurt by their fathers or not protected by their fathers, then they could be easily, easily manipulated because that's going to make them emotional. If you're raised by women, you're going to be an emotional person. There's no balance. If a man is not there to balance it out, you're going to react the way a woman would, even as a man. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to be apologizing all the time for your outburst because you're going to have uncontrollable outbursts where you go off and then have to come back later and apologize. Because you heard your mama doing that on the phone all your life. Just going off. That girl, that, oh, that, that. Oh, she just trash. She know. Girl, she calling me right now. That witch. Hold on. Click on. Hey, girl. <laughs> and a boy is watching that like, huh? So you can talk about people, go off on them, all of that. But then in their face, you can be cool with them. Okay. Duly noted. So then when they have homeboys, now the dude tell me that one time, I've told y'all this before. I mean, they was driving in the car. Insane. Driving in the car, got mad at each other, pulled the car over and fought in the street. Just beating each other bloody in the street. And he's telling me the story. So I'm in my mind, I'm just, all I see is just, y'all just Charles Manson crazy. Like, y'all just insane. They ain't fighting. Yeah, man, I beat you, man. We just, man, it was just blood and teeth. Everywhere, dude, we beat each other, man. But, dude, right after that, we was in the car. We just cool. We cool again. We, we was cool, man, because ain't nothing going to come between us. Dude, my teeth, if I lose my teeth, my teeth just came between us. Bruh, if, if my blood done came out, my blood has come between us. Like, we have nothing else to talk about in the history of this world forever. They would always choose their emo emotions over truth. So when you grow up and uh, you watch a woman function and you don't have a man to sort out what is logical and what is emotional, you know that man to tell you, keep working that job, bro. But daddy, they be tripping, man. They be Boy, you better go to work. Go to work. Yes, you, nobody said you have to like your job. Go to work. You go to your mama, but they be tripping. Tripping what they say to you. I'm finna go up to Wendy's right now. You told my son what you tell him in the window. So walked up to the drive-thru, sticking your head in there. What you tell him? Told him he couldn't be late no more. Do you know he don't have no car and I gotta bring him up here? Well, not only does he not have a car, ma'am, he no longer has a job. Slam! I close that window like a guillotine. Leave your head right there. <laughs> Medieval times. <laughs> Boy, folk crazy. <laughs> but they would always use their emotions. So they see that and they just have those emotional reactions like Judas did. Where you go do something terrible because you're mad. 
And then when everything calmed down, boom, boom, ba boom. Now you're faced with it. Dude, it's like, I don't want the money anymore. I repent. But they're carrying Jesus off. And with all deceivableness, oh, wait, wait, I didn't finish. They would choose their emotions over truth. They would make decisions based on feelings, pride, and what? Vanity. And when strong delusion comes, see, this is what the devil was getting ready for. The devil removed the men out of the home to get them ready for the strong delusion. Because when the strong delusion comes, they will follow after a lie rather than the truth because they're living a lie. If you're living a lie, you're going to follow the lie. If you're living a lie, the truth is going to get in the way of it. Can I keep preaching? 2 Thessalonians 2 and 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. He's sending the strong delusion to divide everybody up to those that will believe the truth and those that will believe the lie. And it's becoming very apparent that that line has been drawn. Like, folks, you either love Jesus or you hate him. When they encounter leaders, they size them up and view themselves just as capable as the leader and question his authority. Yeah, right? My, why these folk do some weird stuff, man? Like if God has chosen a leader and he didn't choose you to lead that, then what you talking about? And is it God or is it not? Y'all believe God calls leaders? Amen. All the men in here, you believe God called you to lead your home? Oh, I didn't hear enough bass. Somebody's scared. They wife sitting there like, you better not answer that. You know I'm the leader. <laughs> yeah. So if God calls leaders, then why are you questioning who the leader is? He might not be a leader of you, so you don't get under him. But you don't question who he's supposed to be leading. <laughs> Most offended people will always seek to form an alliance of offended people <laughs> so they can justify their decision to overthrow authority and leadership. They're not strong enough to do it on their own. This is the exact definition of a mob. It's always the mob that comes against the leadership. Yeah, that's what the BLM is. Them three witches needed all black folks to get rid of the Christian roots that they had and take on the roots of ancestral worship. They needed to open America up to witchcraft so black people could be totally destroyed. Those three leaders are not mad at white people. They're mad because something happened to them that made them all lesbian. They're mad at their lesbian lives and that they had to turn to witchcraft. So they want all black people destroyed. You don't call on the ancestral spirits unless you're trying to tear the whole thing up. <laughs> Can I keep preaching in here? Mm -hmm. This is the mob, man. This Black Lives Matter mob. This is what Miriam did with Aaron when they tried to create a mob against Moses, Dathan Abiram, and Korah. The mob against Moses. Let's turn the people against Moses because he's not the only one qualified to be the leader.
is what Ahithophel did with Absalom and what Judas did with the chief priest. Judas wouldn't have done this by himself because when he was left by himself, he regretted it. <laughs> he regretted it when he was by himself. He needed a group. He needed some people. Judas got used. They can never do anything alone. If they had the fortitude to stand alone, they wouldn't start the seditions and discord in the first place. That's where it started, the lack of fortitude. All of these folks <coughs> marching, that's a group of weakness. Yeah. You turn up stuff because of TV? You don't even have the facts. They come up to you and ask, what you mad about? Cause the way they did her. What did they do? They innocently shot her in her sleep. Well, what if I was to tell you that that's not really true? I mean, what, they said it was true. Who is they? They. Who is they? They. All these they around. They. You were an angry mob because of what an angry mob told you. You don't even have facts. And you tearing stuff up and burning stuff up and should be at work. Like, won't you get that mad about them child support payments? Let's see you get that mad. Let's see you have the same. <laughs> yeah, Michael Irvin. Same intensity. Let's have, let's have that intensity about paying your bills on time. Just get mad at late. Mad at lateness. I'm mad at late. Grace periods be gone. I hate grace periods. I'm going to march against a grace period. I'm paying on time. <laughs> People with fortitude will stand with their leaders and not against them. Amen? It takes fortitude to do that, though. It takes fortitude to stick with your own decision of the leader you selected. <laughs> it takes fortitude. I made this decision, so I'm going to stick with my decision. Matthew 24 and 10. And then shall many be what? Offended. And when they're offended, what are they going to do? Betray one another, and then what are they going to do? They're going to hate one another. Summary! Betrayal! <laughs> it's an end time prophecy that Jesus spoke of. He said that it would happen. An offended mother will implant many years of betrayal in her children against the bad father. She will keep the children knowing how their father betrayed them and left them to her. Now, this don't excuse the father. He was wrong. But whoever the kids end up with don't need a lesson in that. Because one day they're going to need to make the decision to be married. And they don't need a looming thought of discouragement hanging over them. She will keep the children knowing how their father betrayed them and left them to her. She will use this ploy many times to discredit their father for her own exoneration. Now, I'm not picking on women. I'm just using the statistic. So because 80% of African-American children are raised in a single-parent home by the mother only, that's why I'm targeting this. Okay? 80%. That's a real statistic right now. Okay? So, because of that, she will use this ploy many times to discredit their father for her own exoneration, which rightfully so. She wants to feel good about the fact that she's trying to do it on her own. So I get that, but you don't want to send the wrong message to them. Because in turn, this causes them to be truce breakers and betrayers themselves. So if you betray their father, who you laid with and had them, 
they're going to grow up and be truce breakers and betrayers. Because you just taught them that it's okay to betray. They grow up believing that all men will betray them. They anticipate negativity or misfortune because of misguided perceptions and they sabotage good relationships for fear of it. To protect themselves from being hurt, they'll blow up a good thing. Boys and girls, they will twist scripture to back their actions and insubordinate behaviors. They will judge men's hearts before they even act. They will create offenses within themselves in instances where nothing has really happened to them. They're mad at something else. This is simply the devil recruiting his final army of the offended, that mob, the BLM marchers that hate Christ. He's creating, recruiting his final army of the offended to fight against the remnant of God. You know, when I was younger, and they would tell me, yeah, the people going to line up at the Armageddon or whatever, and they're going to fight against Jesus when he comes back. And I was just in my mind, I was like, how can people, like when they see Jesus, it's like, you're going to still be mad at something? But now you see, you hear them, the way they talking about Jesus, they ready to fight him now. When he comes, they're going to blame him for how their lives turned out. Most that are offended do not even know they've switched sides. <laughs> like the Pharisees and chief priests, they are convinced that they are doing God a service. But their fruit will always line up with the things that God hates in the world. You can clearly see which side they are on. How? By their fruit. Romans 12 and 17. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Can we just stay there? You don't pay men evil for evil. Even if they've done something to you, you don't repay them with evil. You provide things honest in the sight of how many men? Everybody. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, Live how? Peaceably with all men. You know you can live peaceably with some folks if you just shut up? Yeah. Every time I go around them, it's just tension in the wind, just tension and tension. But that's everywhere you go. It's you. Won't you shut up? Next time you go around them, hush. Thanksgiving is coming. When you gather around the Thanksgiving table, shut up. They don't need to know the latest truth behind hip-hop info. They don't even know the truth behind the BLM. And your auntie wearing the shirt. She got on the Black Lives Matter shirt and you just felt it in your spirit to go into the truth behind the witchcraft. Oh, they just witches. Who's witches? All the BLMs and looking at them. Can you calm down? Just shut up. You can enjoy that food if you hush. No, oh, they, see, cause they don't want to deal with the truth. They, I know the truth. They don't want to deal with the truth. See, because when I bring the truth, everybody just going to well, What about the truth about you? Can we talk about the truth about you? In high school, you was a slut. Can we go back to high school? I mean, why, we, why, why is just the BLM truth that's relevant? Shooting dice outside the church, on the church steps, just. <laughs> what we hitting for? What we hitting for? Man, they in there praying, I don't care. What we hitting for? I'm praying too, I'm on my knees. I need a new pair of shoes. Let's go back to the hidden day. Well, wait. When your breath stunk of liquor all the time. The mints didn't help you. Why you think the mints was covering it? <laughs> yeah, 
they don't want to go back to that. They just, I see the truth. It's the truth. But you don't want to go down the truth past. Because we all got a past. Amen. Oh, anybody got a past? Somebody in here don't have a past. Amen. You's a lie. But we recompense to no man evil for evil. We provide things honest in the sight of all. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, and this means Paul really means this, dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I'll repay it. So don't be going and marching and trying to pay somebody back, and you really don't even have the facts of the situation. Amen. If Judas had sat down with him and asked him for the facts, okay, why are you mad at Jesus? Like, what did he really do? They wouldn't have been able to tell him because he didn't do anything. But you let your offense make you emotional. You didn't even want to know the facts. I'll do it. Therefore, if thy enemy is hungry, do what? Feed your enemy. Ooh, somebody just like, uh-uh. Nope. Guess I'm going to hell then. Nope. I ain't thinking what I'm going to do with this food if I see them. Nope, the Bible says, if your enemy is hungry, you feed them. And if they're thirsty, you give them to drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap what? Coals of fire on his head. See, these coals of fire hit Judas's head. See, because Judas was mad. He's offended. He did his thing, took the money. But then when the smoke cleared and, and all the folk, when he found out he was used, he had a change of heart. You know why his heart changed? Because he started remembering. This is the Christ that fed me when I was hungry. This is the same man that spent his time teaching me, giving me the word, helping me. All this time, all he wanted to do was help me. And I did him like this. Yeah. Hot coals of fire hit his head. Be not overcome of evil. But overcome evil with what? Everyone stand to your feet. Let me turn the lights on. Amen. The offended ones, this generation of people. So we're going to pray right now against offenses again. And we're going to pray that we're just not going to be manipulated by what we're seeing. What they're trying to show us, we're just going to believe and trust God that we're not going to let our emotions cause us to make decisions that we'll regret. We're going to pray that we can stand in this end times. Not be shaken. Amen? Like that tree planted by the rivers. Come on, PJ. That tree planted by the rivers of water. We will not be what? Moved. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for this message. God, we thank you because you saw fit for us to be in the time that we're in. And though many men hate you, Lord, and though they are calling your name, using profanity and blaspheming your name, and denying that you are the Christ and denying that you lead and speak through men and Father God discrediting the voices that you've raised up in this hour and just going against the assembly of the church and the fellowship Father God and breaking into churches and interrupting services and Father God just being disruptive and hateful and vengeful Father we pray right now for forgiveness for them God, we pray right now for forgiveness for all that are against you. We stand right now, God, praying for mercy for them, for their souls, for their hearts, for their minds, so they don't end up like Judas, Dathan, Abiram, those that the ground opened up and swallowed up. Father God, or Miriam, who was leprous and cast out of the camp. These people that try to defy the true and living God, there are so many examples of what happens to them. So Father, we pray for mercy, that you would render mercy to them. Forgive them, Lord. 
in spite of how their lives turned out, in spite of what was done to them, in spite of the decisions or choices, some of them wasn't even their choice. Some of them were just hurt. Some of them were offended. Some of them were violated. Whatever the case is, God, as they march, as they yell, as they curse, as they swear, Father God, as they blame you, we pray for forgiveness right now. We pray for this forgiveness across our country, Lord. In every city where they're protesting, God, we pray that an answer from you would touch their hearts. God, we pray that you would even use us that know the truth, that hear the truth, to be able to share it when needed, Father God, with a meek spirit, not incriminating ourselves in any way, but with meekness, restoring them, Father God, so that we won't be tempted. So, Father, we pray right now against the emotionalism of this nation, fatherlessness, and all the different ingredients that it took to create the, the offended ones, this generation of those that are offended. And Father, we pray for our own minds and our hearts. We pray against the spirit of fear that we will not walk around being afraid of those that are offended. God, and we, we pray for fortitude to stand strong, plant it like the tree by the rivers of living water, being nourished by the word, nourished by the fellowship, but being strong and standing in the faith in this last hour, no matter what comes our way, no matter what this world does, no matter what their reaction, even to the election that's coming, no matter what ends up happening here in this nation, in this world, we're going to stand planted firm in what we know to be the truth. And I pray right now, Father God, that you would fill us with your Holy Ghost so that we can exhibit the fruits of your spirit the love, the joy, the peace, the long-suffering, the gentleness, the goodness, the faith, the meekness, and the self-control so that we will be examples of you in this last hour and that those that are offended, and those that are hurt, Father God will get hot coals heaped upon them when they see us exhibiting our godly Father, I pray right now, even for everyone under the sound of my voice, that this word will take root, that this word would take root. Defy the bitterness, defy the bitter root, cut the bitter root down, that this word, this truth will take root and no bait of Satan will hinder those that hear it. In Jesus' name.